Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is talk to you about transformations of functions. And I think one of the easier ways to understand different transformations of different functions is really to understand what the different types of ways that we can transform a function as well as how they affect the function as being are they inside the function or outside the function. So when we're looking at a function, you know, let's just say f of x, there's a lot of different things that we can do to the function that is going to kind of transform it. And if you kind of remember in like your you know, geometry days, let's say we have a, a nice little, you know, triangle over here. We could reflect that triangle, you know, over the y-axis. We could reflect that triangle, you know, over the x-axis. We could stretch that triangle vertically. We could stretch that triangle horizontally, right? And then we could also just shift, the, shift that triangle to the right, you know, down to the left and up. So there's a lot of different things we can do to the triangle and in geometry we kind of just focused on the the shape and in, in applying that. But what we're going to do in this video is just kind of talk more about that as far as um, algebraically how those transformations can affect our function. And we can deal with many different of the ten parent functions um, and transform them all all the same way but it's all going to look a little bit differently because all those functions you know, also look a little bit differently. So I'm going to, for any function, doesn't really matter what the function is, we can talk about um, different values for A, B. Now actually for this case I'm not going to talk about B, minus C, and then plus D. We'll talk about B in another video um, for you as far as how that affects our transformation. Actually, you know what, let's, uh, I'll bring that in there. B gets a little tricky, so we don't always talk about it as far as what's going to be happening. However, there's kind of two things I want you guys to understand. And these are like the main things for me as far as understanding. Notice how A and D are outside the function, and B and C are inside the function, right? And I think that's very important because a lot of times we're going to get confused as far as, you know, is it this transformation, is it this one? And it all really depends on, is it inside the function or outside the function? So just to kind of give you, you know, some examples here, if I had, you know, three. So the first thing we want to look at when we're applying transformation is understanding the parent function. So, you know, x squared, square root of x. And let's talk about uh, 1 over x can sometimes be confusing. Let's do absolute value of x. Okay. So if we're looking at those functions, if I wanted to apply a transformation outside the function, it might look something like this, 3x squared, you know, 1 half, square root of x, um, or negative 2, square root of x. In this case, the 3, 1 half, and the, and the negative 2 are all a's. They're all being multiplied outside of the function. A b might look something like this. Uh, negative x squared, the square root of 1 fourth x. And let's see, oh, that's absolute. What the heck am I doing? That's absolute value. Um, then you could also do like 5x. So do you notice the difference here as if it's an a or a b? The a's are inside of the function, the b's are outside of the function. Now that's very important because we need to understand what exactly does a and b do. So a, when a is going to be greater than 1, you have a vertical stretch. Hmm, okay. Uh, here, let's do this over here. When a is greater than 1, you have a vertical stretch. When a, when a is greater than 0, but less than 1, then you're going to have a vertical compression, sorry. Okay, so you can see here it's a vertical stretch. Here it's a vertical compression. Now the negative, you actually want to look at this, it's actually the absolute value of A. The negative is actually not going to affect the stretch or compression. So we do actually got to be careful with the absolute value. But the negative is now when you have A is less than 0. And obviously if A was 0, we wouldn't even have a whole function. But when a is less than 0, we have a reflection of the x-axis. Okay? Now b is going to be something a little bit different. When b is greater than 1, 
So in this case, you have a B that is greater than one. What that's doing is kind of something very similar, but it's not the exact same. That is going to be a horizontal compression. And when B is between, is greater than zero, but is less than one, that is a vertical, I'm sorry, horizontal stretch. Now, these kind of might, might seem like they kind of seem the same, like, hey, vertical compression, horizontal stretch. I'm sorry, vertical stretch, horizontal compression. They think about the same and they look about the same, but not always are they going to be exactly the same. And the best way to you know, look at that, I would say, would be in the square root function. Um, because obviously, the squaring functions, uh, sometimes they can get, you know, look very similar for given values. Um, but when you start ex playing around with different functions, you can see for the square root function, they're not exactly the same. And the other thing, the last important thing, when b is less than 0, anytime b is going to be less than 0, uh, then you're going to have a reflection of the y-axis. And this is very important because these two functions, the uh, x squared and absolute value of x, are, are, are symmetric about the y-axis. So not always is it very apparent of how those, um, how those look or that you are applying that uh, reflection. However, when I get into my other video that talks about B a little bit more in depth, you can see actually how that will still affect, um, still affect the, the graph. All right, then let's go and move into C. Again, C is something that is being uh, subtracted um, inside the function. And so therefore, it could look something like this. It could also look something like this, um, x plus 2. Or you know you could also have um, square root of x plus two, or you could have the absolute value of x, um, I don't know, minus or plus five. Okay, no, no, plus five. So the important thing in this case is notice that the formula is x minus c. Right? Now, this doesn't, doesn't take case when we have a b. Notice my b is 1 in all these cases, and that's where this is going to be really informed or really important. But remember the formula is x minus c, x minus c. So a lot of times, um, x minus c. A lot of times, it's, e it's nice to put that 1 in parentheses. So you can see that it's x minus 1, x minus c. So therefore, in this case, you can see is the c is equal to 1. In this case, c is equal to negative 2. Well, how do you get negative 2? Well, because again, the formula is x minus, minus, how could I rewrite an addition as a subtraction problem? Minus a negative. x minus c. So in this case, c is um, negative 2. And exactly the same thing here, x is minus a negative 5. OK? So what b does is b is going to be your horizontal shift. And I don't want to say it's always the opposite, because I don't want you to always you know, get confused. I want you, it still is there. It's just the formula, how it's written, is x minus c. So just make sure when you're understanding that, you're writing it into that understanding. But if you want kind of like the simplistic understanding, then yes. You know, when it's x plus 5, that means it's 5 units to the left, 2 units to the left, 1 unit to the right. And last but not least is going to be your d. And d could take shape anything like this, x squared plus 1, you know, square root of x minus 2 absolute value of x minus you know, 1 third. So notice the difference between the d's and the c's. The d's are outside of the function. The c's are inside of the function. And that's important because when we're doing d, that's going to be our vertical shift. Okay, So that's going to be our, our vertical shift, basically moving the graph up or down. So the important thing from this is you know, I gave you three functions, but you know, there's 10 basic parent functions. It doesn't matter what function I give you, or even if I just give you a random function, h of x. And I say h of x equals 2 times h of, or negative 2 times you know, h of x plus 1. We have no idea what the function h of x is, but I do know it's being multiplied by negative 2, meaning it's going to have a vertical stretch of 2. It's going to be reflected about the x-axis, and it's going to be shifted um, up one unit. Or I could also say you know, h of x equals um, h of x minus 1. Therefore, I know that the graph is going to be here. It's going to be shifted one unit to the right. 
right? So it all depends on where those numbers are, if they're inside or outside, how you can apply the transformation. And I think that's kind of the basic um, overview video I can make for transformations of functions without doing multiple examples because those are the videos that I mostly do is showing you how to do them. But I think for the general understanding, it's understanding what the values are, if they're inside or outside, and then what exactly they mean. So therefore, you can apply it not just to the three functions I chose, but to any function that you are working on. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you transform functions. Thanks.